Hey, what's up guys? Nadi and Sans here back yet again with another very exciting episode of Learn How to Edit Stuff. First order of business, yes, there is a desk set up behind me. My coworker Damien is staying with me for a little bit. He's in between leases on apartments for about 30 days, staying with me in my guest room, hanging out. We got his desk set up back here. So don't make a big deal about it. Is there anything else important I wanted to tell you? Mm, I had it in my head and I forgot. Oh, we hit 100K on this channel, what the f Big, gigantic, huge shout out to everybody out there that has subscribed to my channel, who enjoys my content, who reaches out to me on social media and says that I'm helping them in one way or another. It's it, it's actually mind blowing because I really never thought that this channel would get as big as it is today and it's only getting bigger and it's all thanks to you guys. I do these videos for you guys and I really hope you continue to enjoy them over time. You know, like a good bottle of wine, it gets better with age. Unless you're under the age of 21 and watching this video, in which case do not drink alcoholic beverages. Anyways, today's lesson. You guys ever seen those cool skateboarding videos where a guy goes up and like does a trick and then like trails into a stop motion trail of himself doing the trick and that yeah we're gonna do that today i don't even know what this effect is called so i'm just gonna call it a stop motion trail effect it's gonna be terrible for my seo anyway the stop motion trail effect this is what we're gonna be making today and ladies and gentlemen boys and girls for your pleasure i have included the link to this clip in the video description below so you can follow along as well download that clip open up adobe after effects because we're getting started all right guys after effects is open and i've got the clip that you can download in the video description below and the first thing we're going to do is track the motion of the camera because there is some motion happening here if you guys are going to use a clip that you shoot yourself i recommend using a tripod because it is a little bit easier but it actually looks a bit cooler if you don't use a tripod just a little bit more work so the first thing we're going to do is actually track the motion of this camera so we're going to come over here to our panels we're going to go to tracker and we're going to select the clip that we want to track and hit track motion if you guys don't have this i recommend coming up to window workspace and go to all panels which will put all the panels over here on the side select your clip and go to track motion now the most important thing to remember while you're tracking motion is a the thing that you're trying to track has to be in the frame the entire time and b nothing can cross over that point so if we look at this video here i'm not going to want to track anything in the path of the skateboard i'm going to try to track something along the outside and the third thing you're going to want to remember is an area of high contrast so light and dark after effects works much better when you do it that way so always remember those three things so i think we're going to be able to track this little z logo over here on this side so what i'm going to do is come over here to our track motion grab my track point i'm just going to extend it just a little bit and come over here to the z i'm going to zoom in and i'm just going to track this area right in the corner of the z because it is both light and dark shrink my little area right around it and then i'm just going to come over here to the tracker panel and hit analyze forward nice that did a pretty good job of tracking right there so then i'm going to come back out to fill the screen and I'm going to come up to layer new null object and I'm going to put a null object in my timeline and basically what a null object is it's just a blank layer you don't ever see it in your composition but it just holds positioning data so any motion tracking that you do you can put it on a null object and then tag a bunch of stuff to that null it looks at the null for the positioning data and it's kind of scientific and complicated but that's basically my understanding of it. So now that I have my null in there, we're gonna go to edit target over here on the tracker panel and make sure that null is selected. Hit okay, and then hit apply and hit okay. And what that's gonna do is if you click open the positioning data on the null, you can see all of that positioning data, which is now stored in the null. And we are good to go for step number two, which is gonna be finding your first spot you want to freeze frame your subject. And a good rule of thumb is that you always want your subject to be completely in the frame. You don't want them half cut off at the legs because it will look really weird afterwards. So right about here, I think is a good place to start. So what I'm gonna do is actually duplicate this video right click on the duplicated version and go to time freeze frame and it will add a freeze frame in after effects so now i can come up to my pen tool which is right up here in your top toolbar and we're just going to cut this guy out right here now especially around the hands you guys are going to want to make sure to really get kind of detailed and zoom in as much as possible the cleaner you can make this mask the better the effect is going to look in the end so make sure that you go around fingers appropriately and you're not doing any super jagged edges All right, just finished our cutout and guys, arguably the most time consuming part of this tutorial is going to be cutting out your subject. But if you put in the time and you put in the work, it's gonna look really cool in the end. So now that we've cut them out, let's continue. So now I'm gonna take this cutout layer, which is uh, this layer here, and I'm gonna take this little pick whip tool and I'm going to take it and I'm going to pick whip it onto our null object too. Then what I'm gonna do is actually take the very end of this layer and drag it all the way back to where our freeze frame starts because what you're gonna want is him to actually start from out of frame and he rolls in 
and then clicks into the freeze frame and then the freeze frame disappears so that we can go on to the next freeze frame, which is gonna be right here. So duplicate your original layer, right click, go to time, freeze frame, and you're gonna cut them out again. All right, now we've got our second cutout. We're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna click on the layer. We're gonna take this little pick whip tool and we're going to go to the null object. Then we're gonna trim the layer backwards to our freeze frame. And now we've got two. This looks like a good spot for our third one. So again, this is very repetitive guys. You're gonna duplicate, you're gonna right click, you're gonna to go to time, you're gonna to go to freeze frame, you're gonna take your pen tool and you're gonna cut him out again. Number three, done. Click on your layer, take the pick whip tool, go to the null object and trim the layer backwards. And we're moving on. Right there looks pretty good. Duplicate, right click, time, freeze frame, cut out. Number four, done. Pick whip, null, trim the layer back. And we're moving on to our fifth and final one, making sure that he does not leave the frame completely. And we're going to duplicate. We are going to right click, time, freeze frame. And let's cut out our last one. Null object, pick whip, hit it. Trim this back. All right, let's see what we've got. All right, that's looking pretty sick. And guys, you're gonna wanna spend more time on the masks than I am. I'm obviously fast forwarding through the part of me doing it, but I am actually being pretty clunky with the masks. And even being clunky, it actually still looks pretty good. So the more time you spend on masking it and making it look really clean, the better this effect is gonna look. But let's keep moving on, shall we? There's two more things. What we're gonna do now is highlight all of our layers, select your bottom one, hold down shift and select the top one and hit shift control C to pre-compose. And we're gonna call this skate. What I wanna to do to make this look a little bit more realistic is add some camera shake. And if you guys don't know what Red Giant Universe is or know what Red Giant is in general, they're a plugin company and one of their plugins is called Universe. It's $99 for a year long subscription and I highly recommend getting it because it's an amazing tool. It has like a billion different options in it. There's camera shakes, there's like distortion effects, chromatic aberration, like VHS, old film looks. They, it has so much. There's like motion graphic elements and like HUD elements. It's literally insane. For $99, what you actually get for the entire year is pretty mind blowing. So guys, go check out Red Giant Universe. I'm not endorsed by them. This is not sponsored by them. I am just telling you from editor to editor that Red Giant Universe is worth the investment because it's great. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come up to Effect and I'm gonna go to Red Giant Universe Utilities and go to Universe Camera Shake. And I'm gonna click Choose a Preset and I'm going to choose the handheld preset here and I'm going to increase the frequency from 0.5 to 1.5. And now it's gonna give our video just a little bit more realistic handheld camera shake movement to give your video just a little bit more life and a little bit more realism. Now you don't have to use Red Giant Universe Camera Shake, right? You don't have to go and buy this thing to do this video. You can use any sort of camera shake preset or plugin that you may have. I've actually done a video in the past on how to create your own camera shake for free. It does take a little bit of time investment, but you don't have to spend any money so you can do that. The link is in the video description below to watch that tutorial. And the last and final thing we're gonna do is just add some color correction to this because I shot an S log, so it's very flat. So we gotta make this pop and make it look a little bit nicer. So we're gonna come up to layer, new adjustment layer. And we're gonna come up to effect color correction and come down to Lumetri color. And I'm gonna come down to basic correction. I'm gonna give it a little bit of contrast here. I'm gonna drop the shadows a lot to bring back some of that detail. I'm gonna drop the highlights as well to also bring back some of the detail. I'm gonna give it a little bit of saturation. I'm gonna bring the whites down. This is not a color correction tutorial. This is a stop motion tracking tutorial, but a little bit of color fun today. I'm gonna to adjust the temperature down into the blues just a bit to make it a little bit cooler. And I'm gonna come down to my curves adjustment, set a couple points here, and I'm going to raise this bottom one to give it that film fade look that you see on all the Instagram models pages. You know what I'm saying? All right, let's render it. The best time to vape is when you're rendering. Just kidding, don't vape. But if you do, do it while you're rendering. All right, it's done, let's watch it. Nice, I think that looks really cool. And especially when he comes down behind the mask here. And obviously you're gonna wanna make this mask as clean as possible. Uh, you know, I rushed it a little bit. So there's like this space in between his thumb and his fingers that I think can be smoothed out. You can also feather the edges of these masks if you want to give it a little bit more smoothness in the edges. But overall, for the amount of time that we put into it, I think it actually looks pretty damn cool. And to export this guy, we're gonna come up to File, Export, Add to Adobe Media Encoder Q. 
it will open Adobe Media Encoder. And we're gonna go to our output destination, just the desktop right now is fine. We're gonna click on our preset and we're gonna export it in H.264. The preset I'm going to use is the Vimeo 1080 HD preset. We're gonna render it maximum depth and maximum quality and hit okay. H.264 is fine there and hit the little play button and it will export out of Media Encoder. And the reason I'm using Adobe Media Encoder is A, it comes with the Adobe Suite and After Effects, so you might as well use it, it's a great tool. And B, After Effects doesn't allow you to export an MP4 from After Effects for whatever reason, so you'd have to export some like super lossless, like quick time movie thing and you don't wanna to have to deal with that. So using Adobe Media Encoder will let you export to MP4, which is the preferred format. It's a smaller file size. You can upload it to Twitter, Instagram, and those kind of things. So use Adobe Media Encoder if you aren't already. Well, that about does it today for me, guys. Thank you so much for watching this stop motion trail 2d after effects to i'll figure out the name later again thank you so much guys 100,000 subscribers that's a huge milestone for me i can't wait to get that plaque it's gonna go up on the wall right between the flash painting and this other painting that you guys never see because my head is blocking the way if you haven't yet make sure you subscribe to the channel and also check out the last video that you missed we do them here weekly at learn how to edit stuff if you're not following me on twitter at naughty and sands you can hit me up there ask me questions tutorials that you want to see and i'll do my best to incorporate it into my you know video catalog or whatever so subscribe check out the last video that you missed and i will see you next time